Hi everyone. We're going to take a look at the fifth lesson today about the Kingdom of God. And we're moving from the Old Testament now into the New Testament. And what the New Testament has to say about the Kingdom of God, which is a quite a different perspective. It's an entirely new perspective. In the New Testament, the kingdom of God actually does mean the realm where God rules. It's the sphere of God's rule and his influence. That's what it actually means. And so when we shift and we look at the New Testament, we got to think of what the theme of the New Testament is. And if you were to step back and look at it, you would undeniably probably say that the theme of the New Testament is Jesus, life, and his death on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins to redeem us back to God. That's the whole theme. Well, that theme is, remember, most clearly revealed in John 3.16, that wonderful keynote verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But let's not forget the third verse of that chapter. Because it's in the third verse of that chapter we see the significance of the 16th verse. In the third verse it says that Nicodemus came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Hey Jesus, how can I um, see the kingdom of God? And Jesus' response was, You're not going to see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. So the whole born again question that Nicodemus brought up was in regards to the kingdom of God. And Jesus made it quite clear that the only way that you can see the kingdom of God is if you're born again. So there we have the foundation right there that in order for us to gain entrance into the kingdom of God, in order for us to be under the authority of the king and in the sphere of the king, we first have to be born again. Now, the Gospels begin, the New Testament begins with Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector whose audience was intended to be the Jewish people. And the reason he was writing the Jews was he was trying to convince them by evidence of the previous prophetic words of the whole Old Testament that Jesus was the fulfillment of every New Testament prophecy. Uh, excuse me, Old Testament prophecy. Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah. And so when Matthew talks, he uses more than any other gospel writer the term kingdom of heaven more than anyone else. He starts in chapter, in the very beginning, and he talks about, in the first chapters, and he talks about uh, John the Baptist coming and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then it says people came to John the Baptist and were baptized, confessing their sins. And then John turned to them and said, now you need to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. So here was John the Baptist preaching the kingdom of God and people had to repent and be baptized in order to enter into that kingdom of God. Hmm. The very next chapter, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is on the scene. It says Jesus is baptized. When he comes out of the water, the dove appears. Then he's sent into the wilderness where he fasts for 40 days. And coming out of the wilderness, then he begins preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. So we have the kingdom of God in Matthew chapter 4. We have confession of sins. We have repentance. Remember where we left off last time? That man has to understand he's a failure, that there's no way me, I, can fulfill the law. I can't. I am a failure. I can't do it on my own. That's where the New Testament picks up. Guess what? You are a failure, Debbie, but you know what? If you confess your failure, if you come to Jesus with it, if you bury it in the waters of baptism, you can come out in the kingdom of God. And that confession is going to be the, the, the entrance into the kingdom of God. But I have to accept that invitation and I have to confess my sin. It's interesting to me that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For what? 
for theirs is the what? Kingdom of God. You see, when I am poor, when I am weak, he is made strong. When I am incapable, his strength comes in me. When I'm not able, he is able. And that's when I inherit his reign, when I inherit his power, when I inherit his abilities as the king, because I'm now a child of his kingdom. That's why he taught us, Matthew said in chapter 6, pray, oh God, bring your kingdom here on earth as it already is in heaven. Let your kingdom be done here as it is in heaven. In 632, he says, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. You see, now if I'm born again, I have the kingdom of God inside me. And that's what Luke said as I close here. Luke chapter 17. The Pharisees come to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, where is that kingdom of God you've been talking about? And Jesus said, oh, you're not going to say it's over there or it's over here. No, it's not observable because what? The kingdom of God is within you. That's the New Testament. The kingdom of God is in you if you're born again. That's your entrance into the kingdom of God. And then... We learn to yield and submit and seek first his kingdom. And all the other things will be added unto us after we seek first his kingdom. So go, seek first his kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. Go with God.